we are still in the realm of image transformations where you take an image as an input and you're outputting another image. So an image goes in, another image comes out and a huge class of problems are gonna fall into this uh, category. And last session, we finished uh, semantic segmentation an image would go in and then you would do per pixel prediction or per pixel classification to be precise. Here, we are gonna continue with super resolution, denoising and colorization. Then we are gonna go and cover depth estimation and uh, pose estimation later on in the future. But what are the applications of super resolution, denoising and colorization? They have applications in gaming industry and the gaming industry to according to some estimates is actually as big as, if not bigger uh, in terms of capital than uh, or compared to Hollywood and the filmmaking industry. And why would you want to do super resolution? What you can do if you want to do online gaming and video gaming, you can transfer low resolution images over the internet to your end user, which could be somewhere in some other part of the world like you're transferring data from here in the US to someplace in China or the other way around, we can transfer a low resolution image and then on their respective hardware, on the gamer's hardware, we can actually super resolve those images. Denoising is the same thing. Whenever you're doing video gaming, you're gonna have uh, a 3D environment to render that 3D environment and show it to your users you're going to do ray tracing. That one is going to give you images with a lot of noise because your ray tracing has a nature of Monte Carlo estimate. So it's going to give you a noisy image and then you're going to denoise it. And then there is a question, is that what PS5 Unreal Engine is about? I know what NVIDIA does with their GPU cards is they have DLSS, Deep Learning Super Sampling. And that's exactly, or the technology behind it is uh, very relevant to super resolution and denoising. And for colorization, for instance, you have an old photo and then you want to colorize it and see what would happen if you took this image these days rather than in the old days. So these are the applications. Uh, let's start with the first paper about image super resolution. This is a very basic algorithm. It gets the problem solved but it's not perfect. Then we are gonna spend a lot of time trying to make this framework better and better, give you better and better quality, high resolution images. So this was an assignment for you to watch the video. Any questions about this? While you are thinking of a question, uh, the idea is you are gonna try to mimic what people were doing before deep learning. They were doing patch extraction. You can replace that with a convolutional neural network. They were applying some nonlinear mapping. You can do that with one by one convolution. And then you would reconstruct your image. You have a low resolution image. First, you are gonna increase the resolution using a rudimentary method like bicubic interpolation. Now the input image and the output image have the same resolution. You push them through a couple of convolution. And then your loss is very basic. It's mean squared error loss. In terms of performance metric, now we are getting into the realm where you are not going to have very good performance metrics anymore because a human can look at two images and understand this image has a higher quality but then writing a metric for it is not that easy it's unlike classifications that you would just say i'm going to look at my uh, accuracy and say that's a good metric so these are all qualitative metrics like peak signal to noise ratio, this is the exact formula for it. It is basically the inverse of your mean squared error loss. And then you're normalizing it by a constant, 255 in this case. And that's what you're gonna use to compare one method against another one. And this is the exact formula. It was missing from the video, now you have it. Any questions about it? And the cool thing about super resolution is that you can have as many data points as you like. You can take a high resolution image and then uh, lose information, come up with a low resolution one for free.